remember. Right? That's not love, but it's concern. That's useful in getting along in life. That's the American form of love. Raber knows it's in him to an extent that is unusual. It sets up his life never to get beyond that point. Because if he did, excuse me, how does Bishop look from this standpoint? Useless, valueless, can't do anything for me. But then, he's, but then O'Connor says, look, there's a part of his soul, of Raber's soul, that goes beyond that. That doesn't worry about the future. The way she puts it is good at the bottom of 113. I just want to make sure I don't completely mischaracterize it. Without reason. It only exists in itself. He does everything he can to suppress this view. From the standpoint where love is about utility, baptism looks useless. From the standpoint of love without reason, love for something futureless, love for the thing in itself, it may be significant. And of course, O'Connor's point is that it is. But regardless, this deeper form of love, which is part of human nature, <coughs> cannot be recognized by American principles. That's the point. That's why this book is about America as much as it's about the life of faith. You can learn about what America is by seeing what it isn't if O'Connor's right. Of course, the book has two, two um, distorted children in it. I'll say something like that. I, it has, it has Bishop, the imbecile, and it has Lucette Comedy, who is um, lame. Is that right? So I get to use words that I rarely get to use. Imbeciles and lame, lamos. Lucette. What does Lucette mean? I think it was the last book when I tried to convince people that uh, Lucille was actually the model for Kenny Rogers' uh, famous hit. And, uh, and I can't make the same case about, uh, in fact, I, I think someone fell for it. Really? No, no, you did. This, 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 that's good. Um, uh, in a bar in Toledo across from the depot, that's not Lucille. Uh, I mean, it is Lucille, but not that character. Lucette means little light. Okay? You've heard of et, like... I can't even think of a word that has at at the end. Kitchen. Kitchen at, thank you. It's a small thing. Thank you. Was, think, what's that? Aren't there like little girl things? Something at? Huh? A barrette. Uh, <laughs> right, <laughs> That's a small bar. <laughs> that goes in your hair, something like that. The elk ets. The yes, the things, I was thinking the rock and um, that has nothing to do with this. Um, <laughs> loose set, little light. Okay, so both these kids are distorted, imperfect human beings. Bishop, because he does not have normal intelligence or language, Raber looks at him and says he's useless, subhuman, a waste of genes. Right? I mean, he looks at him as an X. Lucette the young paralytic and preacher, he considers her exploited by her parents. And actually, I'm not saying she's not exploited by her parents. I think the novel is actually ambiguous on this question. Even these kind of relationships can be distorted in America. That is the parent-child relationship. And she's willing to leave it ambiguous whether or not it is 
exploited or distorted in this particular case, I think. So they come to Lucette's uh, sermon. So uh, remember that uh, um, Tarwater leaves, Raber follows, and he's hungry. And uh, he ends up at this, um, at this revival meeting where Lucette is going to speak. Is that a, that's a good case of uh, a good description of what happens. Raber follows. Uh, Tarwater goes in. Raber sits on the outside. And this little girl gives a speech. Now, what's the status of this speech? Well, the little light gives it, first of all. We could read a little bit. Um, but her emphasis is on the world, right? What the world needs to know. You people, you, what you people need to know. What do you people need to know? That you crucified the Lord. That you desire to be to live a life devoid of danger and challenge, that you want it to have it easy. She even talks about God. It's wonderful the way she puts it. He's a God of winter, not a God of summer or spring. What is winter? It sucks. It's hard. Right? It's cold. It's tough to survive. What is summer and spring? Easy. Beautiful. God's the God of winter. You get his presence, you can get his comfort, but you also get his judgment. Sorry. And her point, the, the little girl's point, I mean, it's a fascinating, um, it's a fascinating sermon or uh, collection of things that she says um, is something that really cuts to the quick on Raber, and that's this. <clears throat> we prefer to think of the problem of evil. We like the problem of evil. Because the problem of evil, by which I mean, you know, it's if, uh, if God is powerful, then evil wouldn't exist. If God uh, it, uh, because he could stop it, a good God would stop it. If God is, if God, is, how does, if God is good, then he's not God because evil exists. If God is God, then he's not good because evil exists. So in each case, Eve, the, the existence of evil is proof of God's non-existence. Okay, that's a very quick way of putting it, but it's succinct and absolutely 100% correct. Um, we prefer to think of that Instead of this, God might be good. That's the actual threat. But if we think of God as evil or non-being, it's kind of easier to live. If we think of God as good, then you have to struggle. Then you have to think about where is the goodness? What is its nature? And why the other stuff is here? If you think God is good, then you might actually have to take serious the love that you have in you, made in the image of him, that is good. The problem of evil allows people to be easy in their unbelief, to pursue their own lives, to exist without the shadow of love around them. Let's look at 133. Jesus grew up and raised the dead, she cried. And the world shouted, leave the dead lie. The dead are dead and can stay that way. What do we want with the dead alive? Oh, you people, she shouted. They nailed him to the cross and ran a spear through his side. And they said, now we can have some peace. Now we can ease our minds. And they hadn't but only said it when he wanted them to come again. Their eyes were open and they saw the glory they had killed. Listen, world, she cried, flinging up her arms so that the cape flew out behind her. Jesus is coming again. The mountains are going to lie down like hounds at his feet. The stars are going to perch on his shoulders. And when he calls it, the sun is going to fall like a goose for his feast. Will you know the Lord Jesus then? The mountains will know him and bound forward. The stars will light on his head. 
The sun will drop down on his feet. And will, but will you know the Lord then? She looks at Raber. Right? This is where she jumps at Raber. I would even say with, uh, with insight into what he is. I see a damned soul before my eyes, she cries. I see a, a dead man Jesus hasn't raised. His head is in the window, but his ear is deaf to the holy word. Page 134. He's not saved. And that's true, right? The problem of evil for Raber is decisive. It's decisive. The existence of Bishop for Raber is decisive. The life of faith is obviously a lie. <coughs> what I mean by saying it's decisive. It's decisive evidence against the life of faith. That's not what the little girl says. Of course, it's not what old man Tarwater says. And Raber, after hearing this girl, says, man, I think I'm going to start spending some more time with tar water. Like, that's hard to hear. Even tar water is more pleasant than that girl. So, for those who thought the novel was dark, tar water is better than the girl. He does not react violently to tar water as he does to this little girl. She, he reacts violently to her. Now, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to kind of cut, uh, cut some stuff, but let's go to the drowning for a second, okay? And I'm guessing that, uh, that both groups recognize that, that drowning kills someone and that it's an act of violence, okay? So Raber has his plan. He's going to uh, finally convert tar water by taking it out and confronting his demons. He realizes his... Um, uh, so they go out to the country, they get a cottage by the lake or in a hotel by the lake, they go out to get near Powderhead, he realizes it's not going to work, they go back to the, um, to the hotel, Raber decides to take a nap, Tarwater takes Bishop out into the boat, drowns him, and uh, so, and thus, book two, part two, and then, and then he flees, he flees uh, the area. Um, So what is going on here? I mean, what, what, is this a drowning or is it a baptism? And the answer, of course, is yes. <laughs> it's both. But baptism itself is a drowning and a baptism. From what perspective, and this maybe is a hard thing to say, but from what perspective is the violent death of a young child the worst thing? Is there potentially a perspective that would allow you to say something like this? The baptism was worth the drowning. Was the young boy immortal? Did he lose something that is his life that he wasn't eventually going to lose? Wasn't it better to have believed and been baptized before the drowning, then after? <coughs> there is no doubt, so I mean, uh, this has several layers to it, right? There is no doubt that drowning is violent. But what's the violence? Certainly, I'm not saying it's your Christian duty to drown people. You got me? <laughs> Uh, it, <laughs> I guess I should be clear. We should have been clearer about that uh, right before I jumped into this. Um, uh, so what is the violence? Certainly the drowning, that is the actual killing of a person, is violent. Okay? The other part of violence that's going on in, in this particular drowning slash baptism is the, uh, is the drowning of the old sinful self that even this young child has. And what is more important for that child's ultimate destiny? The drowning of his body or the drowning of his old sinful self? 
This is another point on which the American civil religion and the Christian view depart from one another. The American view being nothing could be worse than suffering a violent death. The Christian point of view, nothing could be worse than dying without knowing the light. That's hard. From the American point of view, that's ugly. When my, when my daughter was sick, she had cancer, she was in hospital for months in ICU on ventilators, it was fantastic, great time. Remembered with great fondness. Um, you have to really ask yourself, is death the worst thing? And O'Connor's position is unbelief is worse. And baptism that Bishop receives is worth it. He dies believing. And if you think baptism is actually a significant event, do you see how this would be the position? So Tarwater actually ends up fulfilling all of the things his uncle had set for him. His uncle had set up two goals for his life. First, bury me. Second, baptize a child. How was the uncle buried? Well, we discover later on from Buford Mumford. Is that his name? It's a great name. I don't know. If I would have read this book before my children, it would be Buford Mumford Yenna. <laughs> um, the, um, uh, after Tarwater had gotten drunk, gotten a little silly-faced, uh, Buford buried him, buried the old man. And perhaps if he hadn't gotten drunk, he wouldn't have, uh, Buford Mumford wouldn't have come around. If he hadn't set fire to the house, Buford Mumford wouldn't have come around to bury him. So everything ends up all right for old man Tarwater. He's buried. <clears throat> Through the actions of who? Through the actions of Tarwater. He got drunk and he burned down the house. Both of which ended up leading to Buford Mumford coming over to bury the old man. And what happens to the young boy who was to be baptized, the second plank that the uncle had set for her? Uh, tar water, well, he's baptized. And these were to be parts of his overarching call to be a prophet, which I think at the end of the book he accepts. Okay, so next time we're actually going to start with the violent Barrett away for a while, if that's all right, because I just have way too much to do uh, is if we're going to give a good account of this book. Um, so next time we're going to talk about the rape and then the end of the book. And, uh, and then we'll get into Hawthorne's House of Seven Gables, if that, uh, if that suits everyone. I'm sorry, I'm saying that only to see if now, are there any questions about what I've said? Yes, Ms. Forrest? Um. You're saying that Bishop died in a state of grace because he was baptized by young Carwater. Bishop knew nothing of Christianity, of a belief in God. How is that possible? Is, is grace something from without that you don't need to recognize in, in, in Zocaner's view? Yes, and that's how it's compatible. As I say, I mean, that's why I said earlier that how many of you choose to be born? How many of you choose to be reborn? It's something that passes, which means that it's under and over human understanding but it's also, and human consent. Isn't it usually a matter of choice? Or is that a matter of You ever seen an infant history? baptized? Yes, it's a matter of, that's exactly um, right. That's exactly I've right. I've seen adults also. Yes, but, my, the, the, and, I, and I agree that can happen as well. The uh, idea here, though, is that Americans believe they choose God, which is, you know, why wouldn't they choose? Why wouldn't God choose me? I'm pretty awesome. And, uh, and that, wasn't, that wasn't necessarily me talking, although, you know, 
<laughs> what am I saying? I'm just saying. Yeah, um, so yes, it, it passes and therefore is under and over human understanding. And it's an American view and certainly a typically American view that, that um, it's a choice you make for God. That is not the orthodox position as O'Connor relays it in the book. Okay, the second question, Catholic orthodoxy, and I understand she was Roman Catholic, uh, requires some kind of a hierarchy and you don't have people going out willy-nilly acting as priests, and yet here's old man Tarwater, who is perhaps educated in Christianity, but very little else, um, and young Tarwater, who's barely educated in the old man's view of religion, well, I think he is. I think he's well educated in the old man's religion. But your point is nevertheless a very valid point. Um, the heroes of the book, Old Man Tarwater and Tarwater himself, are not uh, Catholics, priests, um, been put through seminary. They are Protestant characters. The little girl, Lucette, is obviously a Protestant character. And uh, and. And so it's a great question, and, and one that I can't really resolve uh, right now, why she uses, um, she, what, what she does is she uses American forms of Christianity to teach Orthodox Christianity. That's what she's doing, right? So this is kind of how weird uh, campus speakers would be, right? Tarwater, old man Tarwater, you guys seen these guys between the library? That, that's these guys, right? That's these guys. Yeah. That's the American form of religion, unhierarchical, but she uses it, she puts it uh, to use to teach, nevertheless, orthodox things. It happens in all, I mean, almost, I, I can't think of any of the books that I know, I mean, but there are a lot of short stories that I haven't read, where the priests are the main character. It just doesn't happen. It's, she uses the form to teach the substance. She uses an American form to teach orthodox substance. That's true. That's a great observation. We'll see you next week. So read uh, kind of